I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop. Today is January 26th and I'm really excited about today's live stream because I'm going to get to show you some brand new quilts that I love by Lori Holt. I'm going to show you my progress on 26 quilts and then I'm going to show you a new mint quilt I'm doing and I have lots of quilts to show you that are all quilted and sewn up and so I think we probably have like 30 or 40 quilts to show you in this live stream. So I'm super excited. My goal today is just to kind of show you what we have, but then give you some tips on different things I'm doing. And just remember all of these things, some of them are new this year, some of them are not. I'm just gonna give you details on what I'm doing and hopefully there'll be something that I'm sewing that inspires you to do something in your sewing room. Sometimes we get in a funk. And so I think if I bring you fun stuff, then it'll inspire you to do something. Um, this sweatshirt, thank you to Pat Sloan. She mailed this to me. Um, Kate Spain, who is the Moda designer, she does uh, merchandise, like she does towels and um, shirts. And so she worked with uh, Kate to design this sweatshirt and she sent it to me for free. It's to celebrate Pat Sloan's 10th anniversary in her Facebook group. Her Facebook group is called Quilt with Pat Sloan and it's a huge Facebook group. It's probably the biggest quilting Facebook group out there and um, you'll see lots of scrappy. You'll see all kinds of different things than you would see in Kimberly's Stitch Squad, so I would encourage you to join. Her YouTube channel is just called Pat Sloan, S-L-O-A-N. And thank you, it's super soft, so I'm gonna wear it. This is how I was this weekend at the basketball games because it was so cold, it's freezing. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna start off with um, some new Lori Holt kits. They are called Mercantile. Now, every time Lori comes out with a new collection, she's been doing, I guess for the last five or so, these quilt seeds. What they are is they're a pattern inside a vintage seed. It's the look of a vintage seed packet, basically. So she has iron and starch, pins and pin cushions, sewing machine, needle and thread, scissors and buttons, and tea and notions. So I wanted to show these to you. So we have this available as individual patterns, a pattern set of all six, six individual block kits. Each of these measures 25 by 29. And then we have a finishing kit here and that would be if you put all of these together, it would come with this. And that would measure 70 by 87. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you all the ones Teresa made. She made them for me. I'm gonna show you what we, how we plan to quilt them, how we plan to put the backing, and what we're gonna do with them. Now, I think all of these look better individually. So that's how we made them. And we didn't change any, um, any fabric or anything. We just made them exactly as is. And when you get the kit, it has the fabric listed and the pattern and um, the fabric for the binding is included. So these are them individually, but these are so cute. I think you're gonna love them. And you know, it'd be really cute even if you just made one. Um, I'm gonna do something really fun with these you will be seeing these quilts once they're quilted in different videos in the future. So I have a really fun plan for all of these. So this one is Tea and Notions, and like I said, they're 20 by 27. I'm going to be including in mine, I asked Lori to pick some large vintage trim to put in the binding. So this is the binding. This is my vintage trim. It is the large denim. And then I asked Lori for some advice on what would she put on the backing. And so she said, all of them have the scallop, just put the same as the scallop. So the backing does not come in the kit. So this one, basically we're gonna finish it 
with this and Teresa made all of these and what she's gonna do I'm gonna show you a quilt in a little bit with the quilting she's gonna do and I'll show it to you after she quilts it she's going to use soft and stable and she's gonna use the big pack which is 58 by 72 usually at home I just have the project pack and the project pack is too small because these are big so um, the 58 by 72, you need two packs if you're gonna do this on your home quilt. Like if you're just gonna do this on your Bernina or your Juki at home. If you're gonna send this to a long armor, you would need three packs because you'd have to give them extra. I'm gonna show you an up close, like let me show one of those cross hatch just real quick on the back. But this one, she's gonna do a cross hatch on the Juki and it's, she's gonna just do the half inch this is going to be the design she does and I just wanted to point out she's using the soft and stable because you can really see that quilting and I think it's going to just add a lot of texture and I'll show it to you once we're all done all the quilt seats are the same um, size thank you for asking Michelle and then thank you to the Bathola for the super chat The next one is scissors and buttons. This one's my favorite. Even though, you know, it's funny, it's my favorite, even though it's got the, the green um, border on it. And I really think these are great wall hangings, and that's basically what we're gonna be doing with them, is um, they make great wall hangings for your sewing room. So sometimes if you're on Facebook, one thing I noticed, there's a lot of groups on Facebook that are about organizing and craft rooms and just super cute stuff for your craft room. And everyone always has some cute mini quilts. These would be great to add to that. And this one, we're gonna use, like I said, the same back, backing as the border. border, scallop border, I couldn't think of it. This is gonna be my binding. And then the, the vintage trim she picked is Riley Coral. And the reason I'm telling you the colors is I'm assuming some of you are going to want to do exactly what I'm doing. And so luckily, you know, Lori was nice enough to write all that out for us. This is needle and thread. And this one's really cute. It's got the spools and I love how the block makes the spool. This one, she selected a green binding and Riley red vintage trim. And that it's gonna really pop. Like when you add that and that, it's gonna really pop. And I would say, talking to Teresa, these are intermediate. Um, there are a lot of small pieces. So um, that's why she says they're intermediate. And they take a lot of time. They're not hard, they just take a lot of time because there's a lot of pieces. The finishing kit offered for the Lori Holt seed kits does have enough fabric to send to a long armor. Yes, it does. It does not include the backing though. So this one is sewing machine and it's a green sewing machine. And I love every time Lori ever does a sewing machine, you'll notice the bed always has patchwork in it. This one, she selected a pink binding that's gonna pull from this. This is the backing and the vintage trim is going to be cottage. And so you'll see when she's picked, you're gonna notice when she picked these vintage trims, she picked one totally different than the inside. And you'll see once that's quilted, it's just gonna make all the colors pop because normally you'd probably be like, oh, let me just put a green on there. And you're gonna see how good they look when, um, when it's all quilted. And we'll probably show them to you like, you know, over time, it's gonna take her a while to quilt each, each of these. And I did wanna point out all of the different blocks have different backgrounds. And these are from the Mercantile Collection. This one is pins and pin cushions. This is the binding, the backing, and tea rose is gonna be your vintage trim. And you don't have to put the vintage trim. And um, what I would say is I have all of the vintage trim in large and small in my sewing room. 
and I've had them for years and I've only had to replace the white and the red and the brown, I think. But I just keep them and then if I, if I need them, I just use it and then when I'm done, I buy a new one. And then the last one is iron and starch. And for this one, she selected a navy binding and alpine vintage trim. So let me know if you guys are going to be um, sewing these, if you're gonna sew them, are you gonna do them individually or as a group? Now, for the question on how you add them to the vintage, how you add the vintage trim, basically, you quilt it, and we're gonna show it to you quilted, and then, before you put the binding on, you put it just like this, where it's just a tiny bit covered on the binding and you do a big huge basting stitch way over here and then you put your binding over it. It's pretty easy. If I can do it, you can do it. And then thank you Kate for joining. I didn't know you were in here. Yay! Kate Spain's in the sh in the house. Okay. So let me know if you're going to sew these. I'm super thankful that Teresa sewed them for me because we're going to be using them in lots of fat quarter shop photos and I think it just fits the vibe of our company. Okay, so now I wanted to show you something new and I don't think I've talked about it yet. And um, this is a completely free pattern at Fat Quarter Shop. Do you think we could zoom in? Okay, perfect. So every year, Robert Kaufman does a um, color of the year. So the one that is color of the year is this one. Sorry, we have them labeled. This one is the color of the year. And as you know, I love aqua. So Jocelyn and I put together a bundle of 14 fat quarters. And then I wanted to, they're all Kona solids and they're listed here. And what I wanted to do was make, actually make something with the Kona color of the year because it's great for them to come out with the color of the year, but a lot of people don't know what to do with it. So we have the men inspired free PDF pattern. You would pair that with the fat quarter bundle. It's now sold out, but we will have more any day and we're going to make a ton of them. And then you use the six inch courthouse steps to make these blocks. And then we even put the colorways if you want to lay it out exactly how Angel colored this. One thing to note is So I made the first row. I'm just going to move. And these are my little numbers. Did this took me maybe maybe two hours? Not very long. It took longer to, I feel like it took longer to cut all of the, the fabrics. And I'm just leaving the numbers on there because I don't want to have to think later. So one thing to point out is the way that Angel colored this is she took the lightest color in the bundle and that one is cut differently. So that one you just cut squares and then the other 13 fat quarters you cut the same way. We have a cutting diagram. So that's what I was saying to make, to cut. What I did is I just layered four fat quarters, cut them all. And then each board, I did a design board. And so the design board will say um, julep and it'll have all the pieces. And then a design board will have Aruba and it'll have all the pieces. So basically I just looked online, labeled my fabric according to what it is. And then when, when I cut this, you just take this off, put it on your design board. And I kept all 13 design boards different. And so when I go to do this, I just pull two design boards out. Super easy. And then on each design board, another thing that I did to make it easy Oh, this is a different insert um, each okay here when you cut it oh here right here it's right here so on one board I'll put the numbers 
two, five, six, nine, 10, 13 on one board. On the other board, I'll put three, four, seven, eight, 11, 12. And then when I'm sewing, I easily know what color goes where because it's easy to get confused. So um, this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a sew along. It finishes at 48 inches square. And I'm gonna, I did the first six blocks and we're gonna do one row a month. That way you can space it out. So I have January done. You can sew it however you want, but I wanted to show you a pop-up real quick. And I want you to look at the difference in the two diagrams. And it kind of takes, it's gonna take you a minute to tell the difference. So a lot of times, you know, you can look at a log cabin and you can look at a courthouse step and they look the same. But this one, if you look, we're doing courthouse steps version, which is on the left. You could also, if you wanted to, you could do log cabin and get a similar look that is on the right. So say you have log cabin paper and you want to use log cabin paper, obviously the cutting would not be the same. You know, this cutting would not be correct. But just to show you, I think that's a great way to show you the difference between a courthouse step and a log cabin. And you can kind of see on the courthouse step, the colors are very even. You know, it's a half and half block. On the log cabin, it ends up where you get more of one color and less of another. And so designing it, we kind of felt like the courthouse step lent itself to, um, to that better. So that is Mint Inspired. We'll have more bundles next week. And the pattern's free online. Okay, so now I'm going to show you my quilt alongs and progress on them. So on January 5th, I gave you tips on making these pineapple blocks for the Petty Four. If you want to catch up on all the block tutorials for Petty Four, we do have a playlist on the YouTube channel. It's just called Petty Four Quilt Along. Now, I'm going to show you my blocks and talk about them. So one thing I wanted to show you is here. This is the one that I did on camera, and this is the one where I took the layer cake and I cut all my strips straight. This one, just to be fun at home, I did bias, just to see if they would look different and just to add some variation to my quilt. And I had enough and it worked. So just to show you that, that's fun. And so I now have All the way I have my courthouse economy log cabin pineapple done and February 1st we will be doing the snail trail block which is next week next Friday okay but I did want to talk a little bit about my binder and some different things I've added since we talked so this is the binder pages by Lori Holt so these are the ones I'm gonna show you right now that we're working on my whips basically anything that I had that wasn't finished in 2023 I put over here and then as I finish each one I put check marks you're gonna see check marks on things that I'm showing you still but they're not done done but on my end they're done because I've done all the blocks in the background and so in it I just put my supplies anything I can think of and then I keep my pattern in the in here so that I don't get lost so that was the first one the second quilt we're gonna talk about is the four inch log cabin scrappy sampler and I've shown that to you in the past. And this one is just, I'm taking the four inch log cabin paper and if I have a collection that I have five colors of, I'm making a block. I don't know how many blocks I'm gonna make but I have seven so far and I'm just listing the collection, the designer and I started it in September and I'm doing one block per collection and we'll see how many I end up with. This one might not even finish till 2025. It's just really fun to just do some, a lot of these scrappy are fun because you just do a couple and then you'll have all these quilts at the end. So yeah, finish size to be determined. Now, this next one is called Enchanted Stars. This is a completely free pattern only available at Fat Quarter Shop. So it's called Enchanted Stars 2024 Quilt Pattern. I'm using scraps 
and um, yeah, I'm using scraps. I'm using uh, the two inch by four inch blind geese paper, the four and a half inch square and a square paper. And then, like I said, I keep my pattern in here so I can always find it. But I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I've sewn and some different things that I'm doing to make it just a little different. So the first block I made is with the Flower Girl Collection by My Sew Quilting Life. And what I'm doing is I'm using the same white on white on all blocks on the outside. On the inside, I'm using a low volume. So this is the definition of a low volume. And then all of these other pieces are scraps. So I think there's 14. So each one is different. So I just pick 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14 pieces that I like with the background. And then I just feature those fabrics. And these are just leftover. And um, so this one is Flower Girl by My So Quilting Life. Another thing you can do if you want, I, I pressed open to make it easier. One thing you can do is you can always make these strips longer and trim down. And you can make this just a little bit longer and trim down. So that's the first block. The second block I sewed is Jelly and Jam by Fig Tree Quilts. And you'll see, you know, sometimes the white out here is a lot brighter than the inside and it's just gonna vary between designers. And you'll notice also I did a low volume and then all of the outsides, they're more of a dark, they're not as many, you know, not very many lights. Thank you to Mel's chat. For the super chat, she says she appreciates the live streams and she feels inspired by to get projects done. Yay! This is Shoreline by Camille Ross Kelly. And this one, I really love this background. And what I do is I do this on a huge design board. I take the biggest design board and I lay it all out and then just kind of do all the things at the same time. So I'll do like all my corner squares at one time take the board to the design, to the ironing board, etc. All the patterns for mercantile quilt seeds are all available individually online. So they should be online, Valeria. This is Summer House by Bunny Hill Designs. And you'll, you know, just the inside is so fun. I really, really like that part of the quilt. And you can tell this is cream and this is white. In the end, it's going to all look great. So those are all from Moda, including this one. This is Denim and Daisies, and this is the Fig Tree collection. And this one, I will say my design on the inside, it got a little lost. You know, I feel like I could have picked a better fabric here, but it's a little too busy, but I'm not gonna redo it. And then this is Mercantile by Lori Holt, and this is that same fabric collection that you just saw all of the quilt seeds in. And this block right here is, it's 14 by 21. So it's a fun, fun size. We wanted to do something different. And then your layout will look like this when you're done. So I've done six so far out of 20. And then I just keep a list and then that, because a lot of times I leave my blocks here, but then I can remember you know, how many I've done, and that way I don't accidentally go home and make a second one out of denim and daisies. And I keep my pattern in here. Number four, okay, scrappy strings. So I'm still working on scrappy strings too. So that is right here. But I started one for scrappy strings three. And I just did a couple blocks. This is from the Scrappiness is Happiness book from Lori Holt. I'm just making one block per collection. I'm making 100 and I have 95 done. So I only need five more blocks left and then I'll sew this into a quilt. It does use the sew-in interfacing, the 10 inch pre-cut size, or you can cut your own size. You just need interfacing that is um, not fusible. It's, um, since I am doing a 10 by 10 layout, mine is probably gonna be yeah, it's gonna be 80 by 80. So this is Denim and Daisies and this is Coriander Colors by Cory Yoder. And you'll notice um, a lot of my scrappy quilts don't have this Coriander Colors and the reason why is some of the scraps you really need, 
you need more than just geometrics and you need more this one has too many colors for me to get the effect of some of the scrappy things I'm doing the next one is my 25 patch and this one is just where I'm just taking um, 25 two and a half inch squares from any collection that I have left over and I'm putting them in blocks I am uh, I have a total of six done and I still have not decided how many I'm gonna do these are just for fun so um, I have six done we'll see how many I get done I don't have any idea how I'm gonna put them together I'm just doing this for fun it's just and you know I'm starting to teach Emma to sew so this is gonna be a great one to teach her how to sew on so that is 25 patch there's not a pattern it's just two and a half inch squares and I just take the two and a half inch creative grids ruler just put it on top of like five or so cut them and then just lay them out and that's denim and daisies by fig tree okay the next one is motor block heads five so this one's got more detail what i wanted to tell you before i started the things that i did is i pressed open i tried to keep the white on white the same direction I'm using two different backgrounds per collection and I'm selecting the 12 inch size. I'm starting with the uh, Moda uh, Flower Girl Fat Quarter Bundle. I don't know if that's going to be enough for the whole thing. I started with five yards of the background from the collection and you know we'll see. Um, and this is okay this is like a list that I got from Moda and this is how many I've done. I can only show you the first couple but the designers get um, and the stores get a little bit early access. So this kind of keeps track of where I'm at so I don't forget. So I'm gonna, this is phase two of Moda Blockheads 5. So let me tell you what Moda Blockheads is if you don't know. This is the fifth time Moda is giving a series of patterns away for free. Moda Blockheads 5 was started in 2023 and that one I made and sewed in Old Glory by Vanessa Gertson. Now we're gonna do part two so I picked a different collection this one is going to run January 3rd to July 31st patterns are available free every Wednesday on the Moda Fabrics blog there is also a Moda Facebook group that is called Moda Blockheads that you can join that is not where you find the patterns but you can ask questions in that group so what I did to begin with is anytime I have two sizes I always cover up the small size because if I don't I will accidentally cut the wrong size so this is like I said the flower girl collection and what I decided to do is do two backgrounds in each one so I did a low volume and then the white on white and this is the print I was telling you that I'm trying to keep going the same way why I decided to do that I don't know I think I'm out of my mind this is called dream big by sherry mcconnell i use triangle paper size two inch here here you can use the eleanor burns large flying geese ruler or the it's so emma two inch by four inch flying geese paper i definitely use the square and a square four inch paper here so you know this is what i used and i just i have all of this at home and i just pull it out i just instinctively know now so I'm doing the 12 inch so this is the first one I'm going to show them all to you together at the end just to kind of show you how I'm doing the color so that's the first one the second one is all stars by Lisa Bonjean this one I also use that H200 which um, I just used triangles on a roll I pressed open I actually pressed all of these open and then I tried to keep my white on white all the same direction I kind of feel like because it's a stronger white on white if you have everything going the wrong like different directions your eye might it might make it a little busy and so like I said one low volume on the outside a white on white on the inside sometimes I'm gonna have the white on white on the inside sometimes I'm gonna have it on the outside but it is a way I have found a lot of blocks have so much white on white and I just don't want my quilts to all be so white so I'm starting to add low volumes in throughout quilts for that second background or to create a second background 
This is Shimmer Star by April Rosenthal. This one was really easy, so it was fun. Except for I made a mistake. So on this one, you can see I tried to keep my white on white the same direction. And then I tried to do that here. Which was silly because this one ends up on the bias. So in the end, it didn't matter because this ends up going on the bias. But anyway, I ended up with extra, uh, extra four patches because I sewed them together the wrong way. So I'll save these and then either use them in a future block or who knows. But this is how tedious I get about things going the right way. This one, um, super easy. I just followed the instructions. Nothing, um, nothing hard about it. And, you know, the same thing. Pay attention. I have the outside and the inside. This one is Morning Stars by, a by Barbara Groves. This one, you can use the two by four inch flying geese paper for these two, or you could use the Eleanor Burns large flying geese ruler. Um, one thing that I did with this block, all my whites are the same way. I did cut this bigger, and so that when I was done, I could trim down, and then my corners are perfectly square. Now I'm gonna show you all five together. And it'll just kind of show you how that low, that second low volume or the low volume with the background looks and how sometimes I've put that low volume on the outside and sometimes I've put it on the inside. And all of these I colored in electric quilt before I started so that I would kind of know what look I was going for. Sometimes a hint I would have is sometimes when you're starting a sew along, if you wait until you have at least three or four patterns, you can color it, kind of see what direction you want to go, and so you don't end up going the wrong um, direction. Now, on the Shimmer Star, how did I square it up? So, this one I believe is four inches. Let me see. Yeah, four and a half. So, what I did. So you make, she's asking about this unit right here. So you put a four and a half inch square ruler on, on it before you cut it. And what you want to do is this white line on a Creative Grids ruler right here. It goes there and there. It's hard to see on the camera. You want to make sure this is exactly on that diagonal seam. This hits the center. And then you want to make sure all four corners hit the diagonal line. So diagonal line, diagonal line, diagonal line, and then you cut. So hopefully that helps. And on something like this, if you've never done that before, just cut one unit, make one. Make sure you like it before you cut all of them. And thank you to Brenda Wall for the super chat. And I have not picked my setting for Moda Block Heads. Okay, so number seven. Is, okay, this one's a great way to show you. This is Paper Hearts uh, B Dots Quilt Along. And we did a tutorial on this on um, January 12th. So if you want to have instructions on how I sewed this together on January 12th, the video is called Live Kimberly Sews the Paper Hearts Quilt Along by Lori Holt Behind the Seams. And on that, I sewed row one and row two together. Now the paper is sold out. We're gonna have more March 1st, or approximately March 1st. So this one is so fun. I had so much fun making these blocks that you can see, I've already made all the blocks. So I do keep track of what I've done. Now I'm not gonna show them all to you until you know I'm done. And this one, um, it does use a lot of different fabrics and I'm putting a wide back on the back and I am adding pebble vintage trim in the binding. And then this one, same thing, I keep the pattern in here. So that one's fun because I've already done all the blocks. Okay, now this one. Warning, warning, alert, alert. It is, um, this is hard. So I'm gonna try to explain this the best I can. This one was a challenge. So I'm gonna try to show you the best I can. 
So the pattern is huge, first of all. Huge pattern. It's going to use a lot of ink. You get the free pattern for the Shine Together Sew Along Quilt on the Riley Blake's website. Riley Blake is hosting a sew along from January to March using this. Now, the collections I used, I used the Hush Hush Fat Quarter Bundle, which I'll show you the fabrics. I used a Fat Quarter Bundle of Paparazzi, and then, you know, binding and backing. This, like I said, runs January to March. It finishes at 72 by 72. I am leaving this outer border off because I think it's gonna look really good without it. So I just keep notes. Now this one, you have to be organized. And this, I have everything, I have all the blocks done. But I need to explain a couple things. I'm just showing you my organization process. All of these are done, these are the outside blocks. And they stay the same in the pattern, all of the outside blocks. So I've got all of those done. I'm going to show you how I have this labeled and then I'll show you some pop-up images. So what I had to do on this, when you look at the pattern, each fabric is detailed in the pattern, what it looks like and the name of it. I typed it out in a spreadsheet, printed it, and to each fabric I put the color. So blue, berry, and this is all what's left over. So you have a lot left over, actually. And then I labeled every single white. They're not as neat now, but like, I had to label each one. Because if I didn't, I would not know which fabric is which. There's so many fabrics. So my tip to you on that is label your fabrics. So that is kind of the gist of that. Now, the difference is the sew along. Now we do have a shine together quilt kit. No, we don't. Denise said we don't. Sorry, we don't. I'm losing my mind. We don't. You just buy the fat quarter bundles. Sorry. Okay. So the the thing on this one is the sew along that Riley Blake is doing, these blocks on the inside Various Hush Hush designers are individually sharing new six inch blocks for these inside. So you can either make this quilt as is, as it's written, or you make everything but except this inside. So that is kind of the alternatives. You do have to go to each Riley Blake designer's websites to find the blocks. The blocks are not on Riley Blake's site, they're not on Fat Quarter Shop, and I haven't found them on any type of Facebook group. So each week, Riley Blake will tell you where to go. Now I'm gonna kinda show you how I organized my quilts. So the first thing I did is I had to label everything. So these are my whites. And like I said, I just took a spreadsheet, printed it, cut them out with a rotary cutter, and there's where all my pens went because I gotta get my pens back because I was like, my pens are getting low. And then these are the colors and I had to really sit and like figure out what color was what. And I just literally sat at my computer at Riley Blake's website or Fat Quarter Shop's website, compared the colors and taped it. I didn't tape it, I pinned it. And then this is how it looked so pretty all together. So it took a lot of organizing to get this going. So um, there's that. Now, another thing I'll show you, I'm gonna show you the first block and then I'll explain how I picked my colors. Cause this one's kind of confusing. This is by Beverly McCullough. It's called Diamond Bright. In this background, I selected Starlight. And from the paparazzi, I selected Cayenne and Berry. And this one, you find the free pattern at flamingotoes.com. And I'm gonna show you an image of how it was made incorrectly. So I got a text from Denise and she's like, hey, do you think that this block has a mistake? And I was like, oh, I guess it does. So I am so thankful that uh, Denise works for me and she found the mistake. And then thank you to Teresa who fixed it. So now you can see it's been fixed. So everybody makes mistakes. 
But I did want to point out, this is fabric, this is block G, and they're all labeled like A, B, C, D. You'll see it in here. So what I did, if you go to block G, it tells you the colors to use. Berry, brick, tiny twigs, or it, no, it says right here, berry, cayenne, star, starlight. So that's what I used. I just kind of took their colors and put them within the block if I could get it to work. So that's the first one. And these are the six inch blocks. The next one is by Christy Lee. It's called Little Moon and it's so cute. So I was kind of nervous about doing this, but because it's foundation paper piecing. And so what I did is I took the blank foundation paper, cut it down slightly, put it in my printer and printed her pattern, which I'll show you. And you get this pattern at quietplaydesigns.com. Let me show you. So I printed this on the paper and then I just followed it. And what I think I was the most nervous about is I wasn't, I've never done curved and I wasn't sure how the background would work out. Like I, I wasn't sure if it was just gonna look funny, but it looks great and it ended up being one of my favorites. So I love it. And this one I use uh, peaches and cream for the paparazzi and then I used mushrooms and blooms for the outside and I think I might have changed that from the pattern. So some of it I kept the same, some of it I didn't. It's kind of confusing. This one took this one took a lot. The third block is by Christopher Thompson. It's called Mini House. I used the same uh, background here and then for these colors I used coral, Riley red and red on cream. And you get this free pattern at thetattooedquilter.com. Another block will be coming out today, and then I'll show it to you as um, I'm done. Okay, I'm going to answer a couple questions real quick, just so I don't get too behind. Will Lisa's Celebrate with Quilt starter bundle be available? When will it be available? Soon. We're only waiting on one skew. You check on it. But yeah, I think soon. How do I know if the papers are the correct size for the half square triangle or the square and a square block? So what you'll want to do is on any of the It's So Emma products, we put the finished size and the unfinished size. So then you look at your pattern and you look at whether you're whether you need to pull the unfinished or the finished, and you kind of that kind of comes with experience. But just make sure you pay attention to those. Do I import the pictures into Electric Quilt or just pick similar colors? I import the exact fabrics and you can either download the fabrics by, um, I showed you in the video, uh, if you search Fat Quarter Shop's video Electric Quilt, Denise has a great way that, that she shows you how you can download all those pictures from manufacturers' websites. For the mint inspired pattern, is there enough room to starch? Absolutely, because all of my fabric is starched. I never do anything without starched. Okay, so the next one in my binder is the Kona color of the year. The 2024 Kona cotton block of the month quilt. So this one used the uh, charm pack set that they came out with for 2024, binding and backing. I have made all the blocks already, just in advance. I will tell you up front, there is enough fabric to do the border, but it will be very, uh, the colors will be lopsided. So I did buy some additional charm packs to even out. So I would have, you don't have to have a whole nother set, but you just need a couple extra colors. So I, um, I did, did have to buy extra that I wasn't expecting to. And then just so you can see, this is how I figure out my backing. So I've already pieced my backing. So when, and you'll see it later in the year, but I had leftover half square triangles. I actually, Emma actually sewed all these together for me. I put my leftovers here with the label. And this is how I draw out my backing. So let me kind of show you what I'm doing. Now, of course, I overcomplicated. My life is overcomplicated. 
So that is an example of what I do. This is how my mind works. There are 12 monthly charm packs for 2024 Kona solids. And each one within the 2024 Kona calendar that is now sold out, there was a link to a free pattern. Now that the pattern is sold out, you can go to Robert Kaufman's website and download all of the free patterns. And I have made all 12 blocks, so I know that it's doable. And um, I'm not doing it the way that Robert Kaufman is doing it though. So I'm gonna try to show you and explain how I overcomplicated this. Okay. So month one's charm pack is oranges. The way they wrote the pattern was for you to buy nine oranges, one white, and you get this. Just, it's blue, but it's supposed to be orange. This is probably a, a early draft. I make all kinds of notes as I sew. But obviously, I wanted to use the charm packs. So I adjusted the pattern. So when you adjust the pattern, you have to sit and like look at it. But what I did, all of these are starched. And the way that it's organized is I just get these little paper holder, I don't know what these are called. And then each pattern is in there and my leftover charm packs. Now some are gonna have more than others and they're not gonna be reflective because I added extras for that border. Okay, so let's talk about just month one and what I did. And you do have some leftover squares. First, I starched everything. When you starch, you might be a little short. So I'm gonna show you how to avoid that. So for all of these, these are two inch finished half square triangles. I did not use triangle paper on these. I just put a, um, cut the square on the diagonal, trimmed these, to, trimmed 10 fabrics, trimmed 20 fabrics to three and a half inch squares, cut on the half, put them all together and you get, then I trimmed them down to two and a half inches with the Creative Grids ruler. And that gives you a scrappy look. So the first thing I did was the easiest. I just selected 20 squares, three and a half inch squares, cut them in half, sewed them, trimmed them down. Now, then you need to pick one square that's gonna go in the center. So pick one that you really like. And then for the outside, I tried to make the lights, you know, I really, you really have to think about your lights have to alternate with your darks. So I decided to place my lights out here. Those, you know, I set aside, cut on the diagonal, six of those. So I just basically took a square, cut it on the diagonal. That gives you 12 for corner squares. And that will give you these. You have to put them together with a dark and trim down. But on this one, when you do this, you really need a full five inch square. So what I had to do is right here, this is not a quarter inch seam. So see how that's a quarter inch seam on the orange? This white is not, it's a one eighth inch seam. So sometimes when you're doing this, because I starched, you have to fudge and it's okay that's what i did so basically i just sat and planned and then these are just uh four inch squares cut on the diagonal and then you know i trim down as i go so let me know if you have any questions of course you could just do this with solids from your stash i wanted to show this just because it's a free pattern from robert kaufman and I don't really love solids, but I just, something about the way they put the colors together and they presented it to us to buy. I was like, you know, I really like that. So this is a fun way to ex like get you out of your comfort zone. This is how you learn. Everyone always asks, how do you figure out color? You do something like this, you practice, you learn what works, and then you apply that to future. Just like I showed you earlier, there's a white on white or a low volume I didn't like, I left it. But you're gonna learn when you do this how to do color. Okay.
the next one is 2024 cottage temperature quilt okay so this one free quilt pattern available only at fat quarter shop jocelyn designed this this is our temperature quilt for 2024 I'm going to show you what I've done to prepare for the year. And if you do all of this like I am, your quilt's going to come together really easily. So the first thing I did is these are the tree trunks. So I made all of these. I made 13. I'm, I added a sec. I, I, I made it. I'm sorry. You made, se I made seven of these, the tree trunks. So I've got those done. Then I made 13 tops because I'm putting one on the back. But I want you to see how big, that is how I make things bigger and trim them down. So the whole top row is bigger on the side, on the top. And as I add all of my half square triangles for the month, then I'm going to trim it down. So I have all my roofs done, all my tree stumps done, and the entire quilt background and brown cut. This is a window. And I keep them with my alpha bitty. So that's the first thing. And this did not take long at all. I actually thought it was gonna take longer. Then what I did, I'm gonna show you a pop-up image. So I basically took every fabric that I'm using, and I'll talk about the fabric I'm using, and I cut six H200s, cut the fabric and the background to match, and then sewed it, and then each of these, I have 12. So now you can see what I've done. Is when you do it the way I just showed you, you end up with 12 of every color. So I have them stacked here. For my colors, what you do is you download this free pattern. Most people do the temperature with solids, but as you can see in my rotation, I have several solid quilts going. So I decided to use the Flower Girl Fat Quarter Bundle, and I picked 20 SKUs. And then Denise did a digital image for me. What you would do, because this is on your thing, is you would just take a little snippet of the fabric and glue it down, and then you know what degrees go with what fabric. And then you type, you write in your temperatures. And then my goal is each, like this is January, February, March, I will be doing each house one at a time. So next week, next weekend, I'll do the whole month because I already have started and I'll just lay them out. And then once you run out of a color, like say you've used all 12 of these, you do another batch of 12. And based on where you live, you might run out of one or two fat quarters. So it's just a, like a, it's like a starter, but last year I did have to buy a couple more fabrics. But I made a little mistake and I'm gonna show it to you. It's not really a mistake, it's a, it's, it, it took me a while to figure out what I did wrong. Okay. So one goal that I have, I always have goals for myself. My goal for 2024 is I really want to get back to doing more pieced backings. So because I'm ahead of the game and I've pre-prepped everything and I already have some of these made, I thought, oh, I'll just make an extra house for the end, for the back, and I'll put my label in it. So I did. And then I was like, oh, it's missing a row. So it's four rows instead of five. I just figured, what the heck, I'm not gonna take this apart and fix it. I'm just gonna leave it. So I trimmed it down. So, you know, it's a boo-boo, but nobody's gonna know. And then I put the size here. This is my piece backing. So I'm gonna take this house block and then I drew out what I needed to make to make it fit my backing. So in the future, I'll have it all sewn together and what I did here, 18, 19, so this is 23 squares, but I used it, each one at least once. But I really should have done another row. Now what I could do, if I don't want to keep it this way, is I could add another row down here, but 
I think it's kind of cute to have a different size on the back. And um, then I just keep my pattern in here and just keep asking questions. I'm going to answer all of them. And you, you can see I put all kinds of notes in when I'm making something because then I can remember, like here I put the paper I used. I put that in there because if I ever have to go back, it's already there. My notes are there. Okay, this one is the Vintage Sunburst Quilt Along, which just started. This is an 11 month quilt along with our Vintage Sunburst paper by Lori Holt. They come in eight inch and 12 inch sizes. And so we put together a free pattern that Lori designed featuring her paper. And we're gonna do a sew along with it. So this is a free pattern. You can download it Fat Quarter Shop. You do need two pads of each size to make this because the, the blocks are only made with paper. The sew along is January to November, so 11 months. All the information for the sew along is on the Jolly Jabber blog. I'm gonna be making um, batches of three at a time. I think we have written for batches of four at a time, but just make whatever, however you wanna do it. I'm gonna show you my first couple of blocks. You should follow our video tutorial called How to Sew the Vintage Sunburst Quilt Block on our Fat Quarter Shop YouTube channel. Now, this pattern is written where you're gonna have three extra small blocks and two extra large blocks. You can put those on the backing or you don't have to make those, just so you know. You're gonna make 18 large and 17 small. Now, I'm gonna give you a warning, warning, warning alert. This took me nine hours to make six blocks. I could not believe, believe how long it took. So. I'm gonna show you my blocks. I'm gonna show you my two, I'm gonna show you my big ones first. Okay, now I made some of these and I didn't like the way they came out. So we still have them, but they're very bulky here and I couldn't stand them. So I figured out a way to press the entire thing open. It is hard, it's really hard to explain. If you guys want me to, I can, but it is probably something that most people who don't have like OCD probably don't care about. But this is insane. But let me show you what I did. Okay, the first thing I did is I was having trouble getting the colors where they needed to be. So what I decided is, I can't just do this willy-nilly. So I had to step back and Lori colored this so I was able to print out every block and then make it exactly the way she had it so I wouldn't have to think of color placement. Now when you do that, you need four sheets of paper for each unit. So this unit makes this. This unit makes this. This unit makes this. And this unit makes this. Okay. So what I decided that was easiest is I did, for every block, I did all the section ones at one time, stopped. All the section twos at one time stopped. All the section threes at one time stopped, then put them together. Now, section, it's actually reversed. So this is actually section one, this is the middle, and this is section three. So it's flipped because you're sewing on the wrong side. So you have to think of it that way. So that's how you know, one, two, three, even though it's one, two, three. So it took me a long time to kind of get my rhythm and it did take a long time. So this is a challenge. This is definitely a quilt. I'm not ever, ever, ever giving away. But my tip to you is to go slow. Do every unit at one time. Do every block at one time. And then 
trim it down. So I'll show you my blocks. So these are all printed out. And then like here, I put placement change due to accident piecing. I put the sizes. All of this is in my binder, but once I've sewn it, I pull it out. So I'll show you my blocks. Thank you hugely to Lori for coloring all of these blocks because it takes the pain out of it. Now the smaller ones are actually harder. And the reason why is those seams are tiny. So the, the Starburst paper is considered a notion. And um, these are my first six blocks. I'm gonna show you another thing. And the fabric requirements all are listed on the pattern. They're right here. So I, I put notes. So then I have listed block seven, block eight, block nine, block 10. And then I keep the sheets with the block. So when it's time to put it together, I could just clip this, um, wonder clip it to a block. And then I, when I'm putting it together, I already know where it goes. But like you saw, some of them, I changed the fabric placement due to making a mistake or whatever. So um, this is a labor of love, but man, it is cute. So I hope you do it. It's gonna push you outside your comfort zone. Okay, also by Mercantile by Lori. Okay, the Mercantile Sampler Quilt Along. We do have quilt kits left. This Sew Along begins Monday, January 29th. I'm gonna show you our kit. It's heavy. It's heavy, I'm not even opening it. This whole thing is full, it's like 20 pounds. You think that's 20 pounds? It might be 30. It's heavy. So, we have kits left. I don't know how long they're gonna last. The kit includes the sew along guide. It is not a quilt pattern, it's just a guide. But luckily, we printed this for you on really nice paper. It's in there. To find the full pattern, each Monday, starting January 29th, you're gonna go to Lori Holt's blog and her YouTube channel, and she's gonna give you tips each week. So the tutorials are on Lori's blog and her YouTube channel. I am gonna sew along. It finishes at 88 by 88. I have not started mine. I'm gonna skip the page. Yes, yeah, skip the page, sorry. I have not started mine yet, but I have taken everything in the kit and starched it. That is as far as I've gotten. In addition to the kit, you need a 12 inch circle ruler. That's not in the kit. And you need the 14 inch sew in interfacing. What that's gonna do is you make your block Watch Lori's video. You're gonna flip it inside out, applique, mm -hmm. and then applique it down to four, a four piece. All the information will start Monday. Now, I haven't started, but I'm gonna sew along with this, but I'm gonna tell you something fun. I might not do this. I might just put all these blocks together. It might look good that way. And then I would just have extra fabric. So I have not made a decision, I have not committed. I have committed to make this, but I don't know if I'm gonna do all that. I might, I might not. It's gonna depend what kind of mood I'm in. If I feel like buy, I haven't bought this yet. Do I wanna buy that? I have to decide. But I also am gonna watch Lori's video, so that will help me. But I'm gonna make the first block uh, next Monday. And I just have it all in here and Super exciting. Okay. Now we're on a quilting live 2024. I, I went too fast. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so I started here. This is what I bought. Now this is a warning, just warning, warning, warning. Kimberly changes her mind a million times and fluctuates. So when I'm doing something, I will start somewhere. I might end up in some other left field all the way somewhere else because like I said, I complicate my life. My life is super complicated. Everything I do, I complicate. It's just part of the nature of my, my life. That's just how I am. Like when I went to college, I graduated summa cum laude because I had to have like perfect grades. Like everything has to be a certain way. I'm super overachiever. And you know, it's funny because yesterday I was like, I think I've been kind of lazy lately. And then I looked at the floor and I was like, oh, maybe not. Because I, I really do do a lot. So I just want to warn you, this is what I started with. I ended up changing. I'm going to kind of explain what I changed without giving away too much. Now you can see I've kind of cheated. I've kind of got ahead. But you get these free. One block a month on Sherry McConnell's A Quilting Life blog. So you can see I put that I was using a fat quarter bundle and then I put change below. So I changed. So anytime I'm doing a sew along, you know, you, if you buy something, don't be upset if I change it a little bit because when I start drawing, I change my mind. So this is the first one. It's available in eight inch and 16 inch. So of course I covered up the 16 inch so that I would only cut the eight inch. And this is the first block I made. Sorry, I'm pulling that rip. Okay, so this is the first block I made before I saw all the remaining blocks. And like I said, I've been mixing the low volumes and having two backgrounds and blocks. That's like a thing. That's like a Kimberly Hoop thing. Well, the first block is written. This is written as regular flying geese on the outside. It is not written to have fancy, funny flying geese on the outside. But what did Kimberly Jolly do? I did all of my months like this because I'm special and I am crazy and out of my mind. And after I decided to do that, I was like, why in the world did I do that? So just so you know, all of my blocks are going to have fancy flying geese on the outside that are super hard to make. And I don't know why. Okay. So what I've decided is, and this, where's the red circles? Oh, it's right here. Okay, and the check. I'm losing my mind. I do this stuff and I, I, this is, I'm so complicated. Okay, January, all of the odd months, January, March, June, et cetera, et cetera, we're gonna use these two fabrics. All of the even months, February, April, June, et cetera, are gonna use these fabrics. And so I have, so I went ahead and made all of these that are the same for the even months, et cetera, and then the other color, the odd months. I really complicated this, but it's gonna be so cute when I'm done. And I'm, I'm just apologizing up front for complicating things. And this is a Lori Holt binder, and these are Lori Holt uh, pages. And um, the pink thingies, uh, Denise found for me on Amazon and we can link to it and then Brittany just wrote the numbers because I have horrible handwriting So my tips for this is I'm just reading to make sure I tell you right My tips for this is what did I do here? I don't really remember how I did this, to be honest. So if y'all need a tip or you need something, let me know. But I just took, I took the sizes here and her instructions and just used the same technique here. I did this like months ago. Um, so hope you like it. Okay, the next one is Quilty Fun. Yay, I'm so excited. 
So this is the 10th year. We have been publishing books for Lori Holt for 10 years. Can you even believe that? I can't even believe I've known her 10 years. So we are so excited to be her publisher. So in honor of the 10th anniversary of her very first book, Quilty Fun, we are gonna do a Quilty Fun row along. So what Lori did is she put together fabrics from various collections. She handpicked everything. And um, you can find this picture on our blog. It even has the binding. And then to kick it off, this is gonna start in um, March. So it's gonna go March, 2024 to February, 2025. Lori is gonna do a tutorial because she does a fun way to do her four patches and that is in the book. But she's gonna give you tips on her video. There is a quilt kit that will be available in February, hopefully before the sew along starts. If it's not here in time, of course, we'll delay it. But it is uh, finishes at 68 by 86. This is the coloring of it. To participate, all you have to do is get your supplies, follow along with us when we release the schedule March 28th. Now, I'm using the kit. You don't have to use the kit. You can use all your scraps from any designer. You can do whatever you want. But I just got ahead and this is, I have done a, four of the rows. Now I haven't sewn them together, but I just sewed some just so you can see the colors that she picked. So these are And I was able to do this pretty quick. This is, it's not a hard quilt. And I am excited because I don't know where my original Quilty Fun quilt is. It's somewhere in my stack of stuff that I have a million quilts. So I'll have a new one. So I hope you join us. Okay, the next one is the Riley Blake Block Challenge. So every year in January, Riley Blake does a block challenge and they do 10 inch blocks and they have different designers each Tuesday release a pattern. So there's a new block every Tuesday except the last Tuesday of the month. And this is the schedule that they gave us. You can print it out, put it in your binder, and um, there will be 16 blocks, 10 inch finished, patterns you find on the Riley Blake Designs blog and Lori colored this entire quilt for me. I used, I started with the Mercantile fat, fat Quarter Bundle. Blocks one through three are available on Riley Blake's website. So I'm gonna show you the blocks. And then here, this is just notes on where I'm at. Like I wanted to cut my length of fabric first. I, so I cut my length of fabric. I wanted to cut, I put notes on everything so that I could get my length of fabric before I started making the blocks. So this is block one, designed by Lori Holt. So on this one, I used H100 here. I, I pieced it a little bit different. There is a free video that Lori has on how you make this block. That's block one, Vintage Delight. Block two is designed by Beverly McCullough. It's called Sparkle and Shine. And I used uh, triangle paper for these two and uh, then just added corner squares. Block three is designed by Amy Smart. It's called Dalesford. And I just used, I did change the pattern on this one a little bit. This one is written for these to be flying geese, but I did half square triangles because I love half square triangles. And also another reason, I do cheater flying geese so that they're accurate. So it's harder to do flying geese with different colors. So that's why I did half square triangles. And keep asking your questions. I see all your questions because I'm gonna answer all of them. Okay, the next one is so exciting. It is my first finished quilt of the year. It is completely quilted, so it has a big old check mark. Made with love. Oh my gosh. So this is a free pattern designed by Jocelyn, completely free at Fat Quarter Shop. So I made it, and it's quilted, and I'm so excited. Okay, I'm going to put it sideways because I want to talk. 
I want to talk about the quilting. This is soft and stable batting, and this is exactly how Teresa is going to quilt my mercantile quilts. Soft and stable batting. This is what it looks like. It's a foam by By Annie's. It, it gives it the quilting. I don't know what the word is, but it accentuates the quilting. And on something like this, I just thought, I really want the quilting to show. This is something that's quilted on a long arm quilter. It also looks great. This is regular batting, and this is a pantograph, and you can see the difference. And you'll see this one's thicker, that one's thinner. You can do either one, but I'm so excited. So this is the Made With Love quilt pattern. I use the quilt kit, and that features the Janet Wicker Frisch All My Heart collection. The pattern has the fabric for the quilt top, the binding and the backing. And uh, for the backing, Teresa put a sleeve on the back. There is a there is a blog on the Jolly Jabber for step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this with photos. It finishes at 17 by 32. And then this is, uh, I, let, I, may, I took the Sweetwater label, added fabric, put it on the back, and then she added this after she did the quilting. And the reason why is, it's a bigger label, and if you would have done the quilting first, it, your stitches might have looked a little bit different because you had an extra layer. And Teresa did the quilting for me. It's half inch cross hatch. So she drew lines on the diagonal. You could also do it on the straight, but I just think it just looks so great. So thank you to Teresa for quilting that. There is also a cross stitch pattern for this that we will be featuring. And if you have not joined our Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube channel, that would be amazing if you joined us there too. Okay, now we're going to things from the, from, I'm gonna come back to this. We're going to things that are from previous years. Oh, no, I'm gonna show you this, okay. So I'm gonna show you what's in my book that we haven't started. Millie's Dresses starts in February. I have only made one block. This is our charity quilt, Moonbeams. It begins in March. Peace and Quilt Sampler is gonna be a quilt along featuring Lisa Alexander and Susan Aki's brand new book called Celebrate with Quilts. That will begin in March. This is the Strawberry Garden Block of the Month designed by Victory Quilts. This will be starting in May. This is the Quilted Scarecrow pattern. This will be starting later in the year. The Designer Mystery Block of the Month for 2024. I'm leaving a spot for it. The Quilted Snowman, later in the year. Hometown Holiday, later in the year but I wanted spots for those. Okay, so number 26, this is, I have 72 blocks done. This is also one that I overcomplicated. This is the Triangle Gatherings book by Lisa Bonjean. And you basically have layouts for four by four blocks that you can do in any size with triangle paper. So I did uh, two blocks per week and I now have, I started June 15th, each block has one print and one background, and I use one inch triangle paper. So I have 72 blocks done. I'm kind of done with these blocks. I was gonna go to 100, but as you see in my binder, I have a lot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay this out eight by seven on a design board, see how it looks. But also, I think it would look really good as like a long bed runner so I'm gonna come up with a layout and maybe just stop at 72. I might finish, I might not. Either way, it's gonna be a finished quilt. I, um, I'm not sure if I'm adding sashing, I don't know. But these are the blocks for January. And that's kind of where I'm at on that. And those finish at four inches. And this one, I'm so excited. Okay, this one's almost done. This is the Spangled Quilt. And then after that, everything's empty. Yeah, everything's empty. So that means I can only add 
five more. Not really. <laughs> Not like I really listen. Okay. This is the Spangled Pattern by Kim Deal, published by It's So Emma. It is so cool, and it's using reproduction fabrics, and I joined the Lori Holt Fat Queer Club last year. So let's talk about that. I have some questions in the chat. The January club shipment that was supposed to ship in early January will ship out Thursday, February 1st. The February club shipment will be shipped mid to late February. The reason why is there were um, a couple SKUs that Lori picked that came in late. So this right here is January club. So this is what you're going to be getting any day. Now what I've done, let me see. I used the bundles from July to February and I took out some of the darks, but I used as much as I could and I'm going to show you my leftovers when I, in a minute, but in a minute, I don't want to overcomplicate. So this is what you're going to get in January. Now we did add spots. We keep adding spots. After these spots fill up, we're not adding anymore because it's complicating things. So if you want to be in this club, you want to sign up now, and then it's probably going to be sold out for the rest of the year. So these were the blocks I made last year. These are these star blocks. I made these last year. So these were from the July through October bundles. And I took all of the browns out just because I wanted to. And what I did with these is I used one background per block. A couple of the backgrounds I used more than once, just so you know. So those were the blocks I made last year. And then this week, on Monday, I made the log cabin blocks. I'm going to show you a pop-up of, of Emma who helped me. She's now sewing. That is her sewing. She can do an amazing quarter inch seam. So she's got a job now. That's her job. Okay, I'm gonna show you my blocks. And then I'm gonna show you um, my leftover fabrics. So the pattern is written so that the inside is all one, but I went ahead and just did scrappy stars because then that would match my scrappy stars here. And these are the ones that have dark on the outside or more dark. These blocks I use November through February. So kind of use half for one and half for the other, if that makes sense. Now, these have more background. So all of my blocks are done. We're going to put them into a quilt. We're going to send this to quilting right away, and I'm going to show it to you finished soon. This is my second quilt finish for the year. On this block, I had it finished, and I was trying to figure out my backing. And usually what I do is I draw what I want to do for my backing here. And I kind of thought about it, and I wanted to use a wide backing. Denise, do you have the wide backing? No. no. Okay, we haven't ordered it yet. Okay, so, or actually I think Teresa has it. So for my binding and my backing, I will show that to you once we get it quilted. But what I did is I had this one finished. I went ahead and unstitched this and added my label back in there. And this will go, let me show you. I'm going to put it right here. So this block is gonna go right here or right here so that the label's kind of in the bottom right. So, all my blocks are done. These were so easy. The log cabins were so much easier than the stars, but I love this quilt. It's gonna be amazing, and I'm gonna show you everything that's left over in my bucket. Okay, so this is all my leftovers. It's a lot. So, this is gonna be my binding. Pulled it from my stash. The wide backing, we placed an order for it, um, and we'll show it to you next time. Okay, these are just leftovers. Leftover backgrounds. Leftover strips. 
leftover. I have a lot of big pieces that are left over. And these are the ones, this is what I was gonna show you. These are the ones I didn't use. So I have to decide what I'm gonna do with these. These are just left over. I did use them, but they're just left over. And then this is the leftover from earlier. So there's a couple options. Lori did a free pattern earlier this year using two and a half inch and one and a half inch squares and nine patches. I could use all of that for this. I could give it away to one of y'all. I could give it away to a member who subscribes to our YouTube channel. I haven't decided. And I'm just going to show you the ones I didn't use. I didn't use these because they were a little bit creamier than the others. I don't know why I didn't use that one. I, I don't have any idea. But I didn't use the browns, basically. So, and I don't know, there's no, re I don't have any reason why I didn't use these oranges. But the purples, I just don't use purples. And this one was too low volume for me. Okay. Now I'm going to take questions. So, oh my gosh. The mini house pattern is available on Chris Thompson's, Christopher Thompson's website, which is tattooedquilter.com. My string quilt will be laid out according to the pattern in Scrappiness is Happiness as of now, but I might lay it out all the same. I've already made one of the quilts, so I'm going to probably take that quilt, lay it out, look at it, and then decide what to do. But the pattern is written in the Scrappiness is Happiness book, designed by Lori Holt. What is the significance of the numbers you've written on your file diviners? Is it just the order you want to work? Um, is it the order you just want to work on your projects? Um, will you just go answer it yeah. and see if she's okay? Um, what's the significance? Okay, so basically what I did, I'll do the top camera, is I kind of started with the beginning of the year, what was going to be quilt alongs at the beginning. This is going to be later in the year. This is last year's. They're just so that I can find them. And then I just use this. Um, and then as I'm done with all the blocks, I put a check mark. And that way I kind of go in this order. So these are the ones I hope to finish earlier in the year. These are the ones I hope to finish later in the year. And then these are just binders so that I can easily find it. For the temperature quilt, the background that I am using is 9900-182. Is everything's good? Okay. Where did Kimberly get the colored block full size picture of the sunburst quilt blocks? So Sarah colored those for me. So if you want them attached somewhere on a blog or on some type of like like what's that flixer flicker i don't know if y'all want them we can put them somewhere there is a finishing kit for hometown quilt seeds it should be online we have a lot of them on a lap throw how can we make the throw soft i use moda fabric generally and i quilt with a juki and a cross hatch i also use soft and stable batting so soft and stable is going to give you a stiffer feel um, if you want it soft, I would recommend using Shannon Minky on the back or Moda Cuddle on the back. But if you're doing it on a home machine, I would definitely not recommend that because that is so hard to work with. Maybe put a flannel, um, maybe do the, the tighter the quilting, the stiffer your quilt is. The, the denser the quilting, the softer it is. You can also change batting, um, the wool is very fluffy, but you have to be careful with wool batting because some wool batting can be washed and some wool batting cannot be washed on certain temperatures. So you just have to be careful with wool batting that you really read the um, insert on that. Oh, is there an update on the backings for Quilted Witch and Mill Willie's, Millie's dresses? Yes, the back, the, the answer is 
those are not here yet they're made in a different country there was a delay but it should be soon it should be very soon but it's just a delay for the manufacturer that was just unexpected on their end but any day is what we're thinking i am out of the strawberry lemonade cheater and i am out of the strawberry lemonade white on white i have no idea how all of y'all bought all of that i bought so much i am considering reprinting the white on white i don't think i could sell enough of the cheater to reprint it but we will see that question i'm going to answer in a little bit oh, am i carrying the darling sweatshirt oh go to kate spain's website kate s-p-a-i-n and it's a pat sloan um well pat sloan sweatshirt can i have my tea I, I need to take a drink real quick sorry i'm so thirsty give me just a second okay so now that i've shown you all of that i'm going to show you the 2023 temperature quilt because it's finished mm -hmm. so i don't think i'm going to unroll it though i'm just going to kind of show it to you it's a million pieces it is all done so here it is in its glory it's really heavy this is um gonna go on the back and this is my backing and so one thing to, to think about when you're picking a backing if you have a ton of white on the front and you put like a navy on the back you might see through it so I picked a white and this is my binding I got this from my stash and I bought this online at Fat Quarter Shop a long time ago this is gonna go to a quilter now I am not sure how to quilt this because there's so many seams so I have to really think about how I'm gonna quilt this a cross hatch would not work because you don't want a cross hatch on something that has sharp points I think maybe wavy or circles or feathers, but I'm really not sure. But this is our free temperature quilt pattern from 2023, all finished. And it's my third quilt, well, second to third quilt done this year. So that's exciting. Now I'm gonna show you some blocks that I have been working on. They're in the front of my binder because they're from last year. So Designer Mystery is written for 12 inches. We have provided in the Facebook group, not instructions, but cutting for if you wanna do, this is the 12 inch, this is the six inch, and this is the three inch. We are sold out of all of this, but I still wanted to make it. It features the Sunnyside Fabric Collection by Camille Vermoda, and um, it's gonna, the this, this size is going to finish 72 by 93 and here's my blocks block seven so this one you just use triangle paper i use triangle paper um this is h 400 h 200 h 100 for the small half square triangles h 200 h 100 and h 050 so that's block seven now i am going to make the large one into the normal setting and you'll see in here i wrote each one separate i don't know what i'm going to do on the others i haven't decided we're not doing a pattern for the finishing of these two but i don't know what i'm going to do with them but I'll, i will show you what i do block eight this one was kind of hard and this one, I did not have enough background from this block. So I had to pull from previous months for these backgrounds. So on this one, I use square and a square paper for these. So the, this one's four inch, this one's two inch, and this one's one inch. And the strip sets, I just kind of trimmed as I went. This one was pretty hard, guys. So, um so loving my square and a square paper because i honestly that was a selfish product that i made for myself because i could never get my square and a squares to come out right 
So that is Designer Mystery. And now I'm just going to show you some random blocks. I'm not going to go into too much detail on all of these because I've shown them to you a million times. This is the 2023 Scrap Quilt Free Pattern from Fat Quarter Shop. I added some more. I still need four blocks. I was like digging through all my fabric. I was like, I've got to have some, but I use so much of my scraps now. I didn't have enough of anything else. So I only have four blocks left. And once I get that, I will um, have it done and we'll put it together. So this is Denim and Daisies and this is Coriander Colors, both by Moda. Speaking of those collections, all my other scrappy quilts. This is uh, Denim and Daisies. This is the six inch log cabin paper. I'm gonna put it in this setting. I'm making them, I have 38 out of 52 made. I use one collection and I use different backgrounds on each. But this, what I wanted to show you is, I did not use this collection in any of these blocks because I didn't have enough color variation to do it. So that is why. So this is the log cabin block. That same collection, I did a Biddy Brick House block, which is also a free pattern at Fat Quarter Shop. And then the rail fence pattern. This is just a easy pattern. So these are, I made five denim and daisy rail fences. And then I did five coriander colors. No, four. I can't count. Four and four. And let's see. I have 136 blocks done out of 144, so I only have eight left, and then this will be put into a quilt. And then I'll decide then if I want to make another one, I might, you know me, I just keep going. Okay, the Quilted Witch is a sew along that we're currently in the middle of, and I sewed that quilt. We only have 38 kits left. I sewed the quilt. So you saw mine quilted, but because we're doing a sew along, Teresa is sewing so that you can see all of her blocks if you have questions. So these are some stars. And this was that. And then I'm gonna show you some of the other blocks. And then this catches us up with the sew along. So hopefully you guys are sewing along. Okay, so we're gonna take a quick little intermission and I will be right back.
Okay, so we're also in the middle of the Shine by Shine Bright Quilt Along, which is from the Bonnie and Camille Quilt Book. And we had a quilt kit that is now sold out. And it featured the Lighthearted Collection. And so for this one, Teresa's sewing along, so I want to show you the blocks. And you can see all of the blocks. We post them on our social media. We, oh, we do have quilts. We just sold out of the backing sets. I think we're just limited on the kits. And once those are gone, they'll be gone forever. So the blocks are so pretty. This is one of my favorite collections of Camille's because I love the pink and the aqua. I love this block. So hopefully you guys are sewing along with us. The quilt finishes at 68 by 80. And this one's the hardest one in the whole quilt, just so you know. But, it, but it's definitely doable. So those are Teresa's blocks. So thank you, Teresa, for sharing your blocks. Now I'm going to show you and talk about the Fat Quarter Club for 2024 for the Solid Club. So every year we change the theme, and this year's theme is fruits. This is January's bundle. The, this is called blueberries. It's shipped to members early in January. We do have some bundles left on our site. If you sign up for the Fat Quarter Club now, you will start with strawberries, which is February. Obviously, since it's strawberries, it's going to be pinks and reds. So each month in the Solid Club, you get 12 Fat Quarters. And what we've done is each month, we have colored the colors of the Bella Solids in the Snapdragon pattern. So it is um, different colors. Each color, so like this is here, this is here. But what you could do is you could take bits of this, make it scrappy, and do one block per month. So you could have January here, February here, or you could make the quilt um, in all these colors. Really pretty, and that's our theme for this year. The next quilt I want to show you is the February Cave Quarterly Club. Each month, each quarter, you get 20 fat quarters with a pattern. And um, those ship out February, May, August, and November. Angel designs them. This one was pieced by Kenna and quilted by Joanna Marsh. It's called Doodads. And this one is going to be shipping in February. So if you haven't signed up for the club, the, what you would need to add, obviously, is, you know, your background, but the pattern comes with it. And one thing that's great is we do, if you're in the club, we do list all the SKUs we use so that if you ever, like, say you ran out of this or you wanted to use this for binding, you could refer to here. And there, everything's in full color. So this is the two by two quilt kit featuring Noah's Ark by Stacy Itsu. This is a little pea pattern. Our little pea patterns are great. They're meant for babies or easy, quick beginner quilts. This one finishes at 43 inches square. It uses the Noah's Ark collection by Stacy Itsu. Angel designed it, Joanna Marsh quilted it, and Angel pieced it. And I'll show you the back. So what I wanted to point out to you is this quilt uses eight fat quarters. They're all, all the little peas are always fat quarter friendly. So um, if you had eight fat quarters and just a little bit of background, you could whip out a quilt pretty quick and it's pretty easy. This is the Fizzy Fruit Quilt Kit featuring Strawberry Lemonade by Sherry and Chelsea. It's our Jolly Bar pattern, so the only way to get the pattern is in the Jolly Bar. It finishes at 56 by 59, designed by Angel, pieced by Nancy, and quilted by Joanna Marsh. Available as a Jolly Bar or a quilt kit.
This is the Love Chains Quilt Kit. Features XOXO by April Rosenthal. It's a free pattern, a free video tutorial. The video is called The Quilt is All Heart. The finish is at 57 by 66, designed by Angel, pieced by Anne and customer service, and quilted by Dion Lucas. So that is available as a quilt kit or free pattern. This is a brand new kit we put online this week. It's designed by Kim Deal. It's a free pattern on Henry Glass's website. We, we do have a quilt kit that the pattern will come in, but if you want the pattern for free, it is on Henry Glass's website. It is 58 inches square and uses the Quiet Grace collection. And it does have applique. This is the Sun Drops and Star Flowers Quilt Kit, also featuring Quiet Grace by Kim Deal. This one is 66 inches square. This one is a pattern published by It's So Emma for Kim Deal. And this is her second pattern. So her first pattern was Spangled that I showed sewn up in Lori Holt quilts, Lori Holt fabrics. And this one would look amazing. I mean, maybe I could use the leftovers to make this out of that. So I could maybe consider that with my leftovers. And it has a lot of different um, backgrounds. Okay, so Strawberry Lemonade has now come in stock, but I wanted to let you know the white on white sold out. We might reprint it. Let me know if you want me to. The 60 inch treater also sold out. I cannot even believe it. We've never sold that much of a 60 inch fabric, but we do have the navy in stock. So hopefully this does not sell out. And this is the navy 37677-23, only available at Fat Quarter Shop. Other new things we have, this is the Rise and Shine collection by Ruby Star Society. It's designed by Melody Miller. This is a fat quarter bundle. They just fold them differently. The next collection is called Lights Out. Now, I wanted to talk about this collection. This is all white on white, and it is from various Riley Blake designers. You're not gonna be able to see the detail in it because of the camera, but they have done Hush Hush 1, Hush Hush 2, and Hush Hush 3, which are designers' collections, but those are low volume, and that is what you saw in my quilt, um, Shine On, I think that's what it's called. This is the same type of thing, but white on white. So we have lights out and yardage, pre-cuts, all the things. And I don't know if Riley Blake is gonna do more like that, but we'll see. This next collection's really pretty. We usually buy her collections. It's a designer called Sanderson for Free Spirit. And she does really small groups, always with blue. And they're always so beautiful and unique. So this one's called South Wold Blue. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. K Facet, um, a lot of times uh, Free Spirit will put together bundles. This is called the Dream K Facet Fat Quarter Bundle, and it's the same print. This is the Dream print in all the colors. And they're half yard, half yards. So you would get five half yards. Dream K Facet Half Yard Bundle. They also put together, Free Spirit also put together a black and white K Facet Fat Quarter Bundle. So this one's Fat Quarters. 
And these are like, um, they call them stash builder bundles. For batiks, um, Robert Kaufman has a new collection called Splash Artisan Batiks by Lund Studios. And it's kind of, um, they're like little flowers. And it's all the same print, just different colors. So it's got that floral print. And we have pre-cuts and yardage. Also by Robert Kaufman, we have the Modern Handcraft Palette Fat Quarter Bundle curated by Modern Handcraft, which is a pattern designer. And it has a mix of Essex um, and some, I think they're all Essex and they think they're just different types of Essex linen. For batiks, we have a new Jacqueline de Jean bundle. It's called Dutchie Blues. And she is with Anthology Fabrics. And I'll show you. She always has a lot of really good prints. And thank you to Sunshine Girl for the super chat. She says thank you for everything you do. Thank you for watching. Sweet Land of Liberty is by Beth Albert for Three Wishes, and she is a designer that she comes out with very few prints, but they are always very um, on trend. So we always buy them. I always wish they were larger. I always wish she had more prints, but this is called Sweet Land of Liberty. And it always has kind of like a little farmhouse folksy print type feel. It's always got a little bit of um, shiplap in it. And then Sweet Lullaby by Camelot Fabrics. It is a baby group and it has this panel. So it's, um, this is the width of the fabric and it's 20. I don't know if it's 23 or 36 off the top of my head. And I'll show you some of the prints. And all of the art gallery fabrics are just regular quilting cotton. Their fabrics are tightly woven and have a higher thread count. And this is Sweet Lullaby. And this is really cute. This would make a really cute backing. And Camelot comes from Canada, just so you guys know. And so for our giveaway today, our giveaway is going to be a, um, we're going to give away to six people, three people, three people get a pattern set of six. If you had magic seeds, what would you grow? You have until Thursday, February 1st to enter, and we will pick and announce winners on February 2nd on the YouTube community tab. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next week where we're going to have a quick tutorial. So that will be really fun, and it will be a lot shorter, and I will not talk as much. Have a great weekend.